How many of you guys brought your Bibles today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those of you who brought your phones as a Bible or brought your Bibles, that, that's key. Um, there's a lot of churches that are, you know, they don't require you, they don't ask you to bring your Bible, but I would encourage you. That way you're not led astray, you're not being hurt six months down the road that they're t teaching you something that that's not true. You can verify it right there and then. We need to wake up. We need to, we need to snap yeah. out of it and not just wait for somebody to come and tell us what to do. We need to dig in and, and get motivated and, and, and seek God's face and move forward. I mean, there's victory in it. And, um, you know, there's there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And, you know, he wants to do something great for us tonight. For the people here, I know that there's already a few people that I can see right now that he wants to really hone in on. And that's the reason we're here. We're here for those people. Everybody else, every person, this is what the Lord told me regarding the people who were going to uh, uh, say that they had a testimony. Those people are being uh, 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 raised up today. Today is a spiritual day that you're growing because you're confessing God as your Lord and Savior, number one. And also that you're taking you're taking your voice and you're saying, God, I'm here. You're declaring the very healing that he did for you guys to come forth. So in that day today, I don't care if you just got saved yesterday, you're already being raised up. He's doing a quick work these days. He's not waiting 20, 25 years, 35 years. He's doing somebody who's hungry now. Yeah, right, right. And for those of you guys that raised your hands and testified, you guys are being raised up spiritually today. So when we get a chance to pray for people, those specific people that rose their hands, and stood up and confessed. I want them to lay hands on those people to encourage the faith because you guys have you guys have uh, something to share. It's tangible. It's today. It's right now. It's not tomorrow. It's now, and that's what we need. We need a, a God of today. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. The miracle work today. Amen. The message is called turning up the volume, and I think He's doing that to all of us. He's turning up the volume, making things go quicker, faster. I don't understand, but He is. And so the first part of the message is to inspire and to exhort you guys. And what I'm aiming at, aiming at is I want to let you know that getting to the top is not the desire. All of us want to get to the top, right? All of us want to try to at least begin to think about being the best of what we do. But your destiny as a believer is, is, is the, um, is the, it should be the desire. Until you start moving... You can't reach your destiny. How many of us even have begun? Obviously, you've taken a step. The women from the women's home and the men from the women's home, you guys were screaming. <coughs> this is a Bible-believing place. Everything is not all gravy, but it's a Bible-believing place. We're moving forward. You guys have already started moving, and you guys are now able to go into your destiny. You, sister, you that healing came quickly. God sovereignly healed you. I mean, that was a quick work. Yeah. And you were able Amen. to glorify God that. And for those Amen. people who don't know anything about that, you can't lie if you had something on right. your arm and all of a sudden it disappears. <laughs> yes. You can't oh, deny that. You can't Hallelujah. deny that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nice. You know what, my son, I was going to share this toward the end, but I'll share it now. My son, Johnny, you guys, how many of you guys know my little boy Johnny? He was going to die at birth. And when he was already out, I think he was maybe a couple of weeks old, and his, uh, his kidney had been enlarged seven times. Oh, man. Seven times. And then uh, the other one was starting to fill up. And the doctor said, we don't know if he's going to make it. I went to some... Uh, um, I went to some uh, uh, place where they were supposed to do a healing. And I was like, I was wanting anything. Anything to believe God. Anywhere they believe God, they believe in. They all wanted to go. Yeah. And I said, I sat in the back and there was... A, it was jam-packed, and I was like, man, you know, I was feeling a little intimidated, there were some people that I really connect with, and I was just like, maybe I shouldn't, and all these fears started coming my way, and I was like, alright God, you know what, it's time, these guys are doing their thing, if you're real, and if you are here, my son is going to be healed today, and we're going to prove Thank it with x-rays, and I said, Thank not just one, but two kidneys, yeah. so the gentleman, not even five seconds, he was already on a roll, and I was starting to get my heart right, and confessing God, and believing God, and all this, and that, just trying to get right with him, so he could do it for me, and I was believing it, yeah. And I said, God, I said, if you're real, today I'll serve you. And I said, I'll continue to serve you no matter what happens. But it just increases your faith when you do that. And I said, God, I said, you know what? He needs to be healed now. And not even five seconds later, later, the guy said, kidneys are being healed right now. No, he said, a kidney's being healed right now. 
I said, that's not mine. And as soon as I said, that's not mine, he said, another kidney's being healed right now. And that's when I knew. I said, you know what? That's my Johnny. I got off of my chair. I was like, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I claimed that thing for my son. I was fighting for my son. And, 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 and could I thought, oh, that's for somebody else, or that's for this or that? Uh-uh, that was for me. How many times on Black Friday we gonna snatch things up out of people's hands with no with no qualms? We have no qualms to do something quick like that, but we got all of a sudden we get shy when it comes to our own things or, or things that we feel timid about. There's no way to feel timid when 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 the miracle's coming. You better snatch it up when your time is now. Snatch that thing yes. up and then carry it. Hold on. It doesn't matter if you stumble. It doesn't matter if, if things go sideways, if you get into an argument, if you do this, if you do that, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Keep going. We got to keep going, going man. Yeah. Keep going. Come on, man. So anyways, I wanted to take take you through uh, some scriptures here. In Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I'm just going to be doing a lot of reading right now. So just hang on. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. What does that mean? That means if you messed up, it's all right. God's got you. Deuteronomy 28.13. What is that, David? Deuteronomy 28.13. We're going to go quick. We're not going to be long. I promise. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm here to let you know that, uh, okay, read Psalms 112. I'm building my case right now. I'm building my case right now. I'm building my case so you guys can believe and you guys can uh, look at the Word yourselves. That I'm not telling you something that I'm, that's not in the Word. Amen. Psalm 112, verse 1 and 2. Yeah, one and two. It says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Now I want to talk to you guys about vision. How many of you guys know what vision is? Those of you guys have a pen and paper, please take note. This is going to be good for you. It may not make sense right now, but if you take it home and read it, trust me, it'll make sense. Vision. How many of you guys know what vision is? Spiritual vision. What is spiritual vision, sister? Faith in the hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen. It's the ability to comprehend what God has planned for your life. If you don't understand what God is doing in your life or what, or what it's all about, then you need to ask God, God, give me the vision that you've created me for. He's created every single one of us to do a work for Him. Yes. I'm barely figuring it out. Yes. I'm trying to walk it out. And it's not going to yes. come to me tomorrow. The next is slowly coming to me. If you guys are at the beginning, then start asking God. Don't wait 10 years. Go through hell and back and then try to get right with Him. Just figure it out now. Amen. It is what you see that will inspire and motivate you. What inspires and motivates you? Kingdom. When's the last time you actually thought, you know what, man? What, get, what really gets me going? What do I like? I know what people like. Some people like about here. I know George likes electronics. I know, uh, I know he's a hard worker. I know he wants his own paint company. Yeah. I know Teddy loves the word. I know Jess is a, man, that's one of the best guys to have working with you if you want to work here too. I know you love drywall. I know you love doing that. What inspires you? What motivates you to do what you do? What motivates you? If you haven't even thought that, well, start thinking that. Therefore, you must have a target. Without a goal, you are not fit for living. Oh, that's good. Hosea 4.6. I want you to go there. Hosea 4.6. <clears throat> today, if you have had lack of knowledge, you've been to other churches, great. But today, you walk out of here with understanding of what you need to do in order to be able to confess the Word of God. 
It doesn't matter if you don't do anything else. If you do that, you guys will make it through. He'll see you through it. And I'm giving you scriptures to back it up so you can use that for you guys. Hosea 4.6. Does somebody have that so they can read it? Go ahead, Jeff. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you for being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Whoa. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. So that's vision. Faith. How many knows what faith is? We all heard of faith, and yeah, I have a good faith, and I have faith in this, and I have faith in that. Faith is actually seeing something that you can't actually touch, right? Okay. You can spiritually believe it. What happens if you're not seeing well? You can't even see well. When you see well, you get well. And you get inspired by faith to move forward, to be able to believe those things that you really don't even see, but you believe them because you have faith that you're doing them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11.6 Whatsoever you are doing, do it with expectation. I was expecting to watch the fight yesterday. But I have a decision to prepare for today. And I'm glad I didn't do that. Because you guys need to hear this today. So whatever you are doing, do it with expectation. Faith is the eye that can see invisible things. It says can see invisible things. Until you believe the vision given to you by God, you can't get to your destination. So if you haven't even done, done that, I would ask God, even if you don't even know how, ask God, God, give me the faith. Give me the vision that you called me to. Begin to ask God for things. Begin to explore those things that God wants to do, and all of a sudden the thought will come. It's like, oh shoot, I want to do that. Oh man, I want to do this. And all of a sudden he'll link you with people. It could be at the mall. Oh, I really like your sweater. And the same vision that you have to help women to do this, to do that, she'll be like, what do you do? And he'll spark it. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. So... Wisdom is a productive use of the mind. That's what wisdom means. The wisdom of God is our covenant access to a world of no limits. I'm going to give you verses and I'm just going to give you scriptures to keep going. That's in Daniel 12, 3. Christ said, all who thirst should come unto him. We not only thirst for water, but for wisdom as believers. That's in Isaiah 12, 3. Man, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> you can't do away with wisdom and make it in life. It is only the wisdom of God that can take you to your destination. And that's in Proverbs. The wisdom of God, the life and ministry of Jesus. Oh, I want to stop here. I want to camp here for a second. The wisdom of God and life. Um, Brother Jeff, can you go to Luke 2, 47 through 51? When we do something that's unwise... We obviously end up making mistakes and don't go about it. But when you seek the very word of God, you're fail-proof. He gives you the wisdom to be able to do it or be able to be like, no, man, I shouldn't do that. Yeah. He gives you conviction. He's like, oh, man, you know what? I don't think that's a good move. And if you can't listen, if he's saying something and you can't listen, he'll tell your wife, for those of you who are married, and be like, no, don't do that. And you're like, no, yeah. I'm constantly making mistakes like that. I've constantly run my family through the ringer of, of barely scraping by because of my business ventures and I try to do this and I was like, no, no, this will work. I'll put the last six, seven hundred bucks that we have and all of a sudden we're in debt. You know what I mean? And she stopped me and I don't listen to her. He uses our wives to speak to us and he uses the woman as, as a form of wisdom. At the same time, he uses us men to be wise for our family, to make good decisions for our family, for our kids and say, hey, no, that's not right. And then the women, you'll know that the women, I know my wife, I know my wife will submit a little bit and she'll just kind of like stand behind me. That's when I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm, 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 I'm where I need to be at with her. I know where I'm being at. I'm the head of my house. I control my house. You know what I mean? I'm the priest of my house. That doesn't mean I control my family, but I control what goes on. I'm the overseer of my house. Yeah. So men, we need to raise up. We need to watch our families. We need to watch who comes in our house, who comes out of our house, and protect our house. Really. And then, uh, so... That's my first part of the message. So that message is solely, specifically to exhort you, to prep you up, to inspire you, to even pray, to have a vision, to pray, to have faith, to pray, to aim towards something. You know what I mean? So to instruct on speaking the word, say what you read. So now I want to go into, um, we're going to read and we're going to say what we're believing. Does that make sense? Kind of? We'll just go into it and hopefully it all work out. Okay. So we're talking about removing the mountain. Today, 
There's some mountains in our way right now. There's some things today that are really, really, on, uh, they're really, really getting in our way. There's some decisions here that people will have life or death today. Today there's some decisions that need to be made and you need to make your stand for Christ. You need to make your stand and, 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 hear your, and, and God wants to hear your voice today. And I'm going to back you up with scriptures right now. We haven't even got to the meat yet, so just bear with us. Mark 11, verse 20, 24. I promise I won't be long. Uh, Mark 11, 20, 24. This is what the word does. So, this is the lesson on the withered fig tree. It says, Now in the morning, as they passed by, the, by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and, sent, and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain... Be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. There's instruction. You cannot doubt. You have to speak to it. And you can't doubt. But believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. When is the last time that you're going through hell, that you're going through a problem that you can't <clears throat> fix, and you need an answer? God is saying, speak to that thing and make it go. Right. You have the ability to not doubt. I don't care what it says. I don't care what the letters you're getting. You got to speak to that thing and be like, you know what? I need to fix this thing. I need to fix it now yep. and take control Amen. and take dominion. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask and when you pray. So there's another instruction. You have to pray. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Now let's go to Matthew 8. Someone new. Let's see. Someone new who can read. Brother, you want to read Matthew 8? Uh, Matthew 8. 5.13. 5-13, brother. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a century came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Okay, Lord, what did he say? Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Okay. And only speak a word and my servant will be healed. What did he say? Say a word. Say, say, say it loud, word. brother. Only speak a word and my servant will be healed. He said, I'm not even worthy for you to come into my house. Don't come to my house. I'm tore up. Just speak a word and it'll be done. Amen. You see that man's faith? Yeah. Speak a word. Read it again, brother. Speak a word and my servant will be healed. <coughs> Keep going. For I am also a man under authority, <coughs> having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Amen. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. Amen. Amen. All he did was speak a word. He's given us the same power to speak a word over our situation. Yeah. Who's sick in our family? Who's going through some things in our family? All we have to do is seek a word and wait and pray and believe God is going to take care of that for us. And He'll do it. It may not be on the time that we want, but He will do it if we hold fast to our confession. Yeah. You know, and a centurion soldier who probably wasn't even a believer, but he recognized Christ. There's Christians who don't even recognize Jesus is in, the, in, in, in their midst. But this centurion who's in charge, I, I was reading up on yesterday, you know what a centurion soldier is? How many of you guys know what a centurion soldier is? A centurion soldier is someone who's in charge of at least a hundred, a legion. 
And so for this man to be like, instead of him being cocky and all kinds of, you know, arrogant things, he said, God, I'm not even worthy. He's got all his armor. He's fit. He's got his men in attention, ready to make a move. Say, hey, you go do this. He's ready. He's right there. But he humbles himself, even the hardest of men, even the, uh, 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 um, a man of uh, a man who has valor, a man who has medals, a man who 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 carries himself in high esteem, submitted himself to the will of God without even confessing Jesus. He knew by the very presence, go Lord, I, you know what? Don't even come to my house, man. Let's go and heal the man. By His Word, He did it. How much more more would He do for us? We're we're in right standing with Him this morning. Every single one of us have confessed that God is our that Jesus is our Savior. How much more does He want to do for us? Are we going to make mistakes? Oh, heck yeah. But that's all right. We have more authority than even that centurion soldier does today. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go to Luke 1, verse 38. Oh, no, I don't want to skip that one. Let's go to Luke 23. I swear I'm almost done. <laughs> I always frantic about time because I tell Barry five minutes every time I've done it and it takes an hour. <laughs> but that's all right. So I feel like, man, I'm keeping these guys too long. Just relax. We're not in a hurry. All right. Let the Holy Ghost have his way. Hey, don't, don't, don't change your time or your words based on the faces of the people. All right. All right. Luke 23, verse... Luke 23, 44, 47. I wasn't going to share this, but I was like, dang, dude, that's twice I read about the centurion soldier. In Luke 23, 44, 47, you guys all heard the story or seen the movie where Jesus is being crucified, right? Mm, yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, he's dying and he says, he says these words. Uh, 44. Father, in your hands I commit my spirit, right? You guys have heard that or watched the movie? Right. And he takes his last breath and he, you know, he dies. And I kept reading, and I was like, shoot, okay, well, what is that? Having said this, he breathed his last breath. So he's like, oh, right? So when the centurion saw, because they left centurion guards in charge down below to make sure no one's going to take him or whatever, for whatever reason, they had centurion guards around him when he, was, when he, was, when he died. So when, he, so when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God saying, certainly, this was a righteous man. That's two people, two unbelievers, who didn't believe in Christ, who didn't follow Christ. They recognized by who He was, by how He carried Himself, by the very Spirit. The Spirit drew Him to worship God. And He was there to do a duty, specifically, He may be the guy who was poking Him, who poked Him on the side. We don't know that. But it said it, and it doesn't say that in the Word, but it simply says that there's a centurion. And what did he do? He immediately, when he took his last breath, he immediately started beginning to glorify God. In the Greek, it talks about... He says, sure. this was the Son of God. He says, he sure, this is what happened. He began praising God. He glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Um, I didn't get that. Genesis God said... All right, you guys get the point of that. I didn't write down the Greek. I just read it. But... I mean, some of us have probably walked away from Christ in this. We know that He's always there. We know He's always faithful. But these people, I mean, He wants to do a work in us. You know what I mean? Yes. You don't have to know Him 10 years to know Him better. This is your experience, the healing right there. If I would have had that thing in my arm, I would be like, dang. And all of a sudden, from one day to the next, it's gone. Praise you God. guys are witnesses to know that that's God. real. The Lord you, guys know what, you guys remember what, what happened to her? She had a tumor in her arm. 14-inch tumor. A 14-inch tumor in her arm. When did oh. you have it? Um, it started over a year ago. Um, it was inoperable. It wasn't cancer. But it took over the entire humerus from here. Went up past the scapula, <laughs> past the clavicle, and was putting pressure on the little cushy thing called the bursa inside. Can give you bursitis. Yes. So it was causing bursitis and extreme pain. Um, you at the doctor. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. Thank God. I couldn't Thank do God. this. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. For you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, really? Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. <Laura-Laura. laughs> David, 
can I say something so beautiful? Yeah. And I wasn't expecting the Lord to heal while I was preaching. But she said, I was preaching on the fire of God. And she said, every time I said the word fire, she felt fire hit her, Come her on, arm. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't know it until last night when we were reading my notes. Yeah, and she had the same scriptures that God gave me. But I had written, God put fire in my bone. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. She's I mean, the fire of God. Amen. Thank you, hallelujah. Jesus. That's one of many testimonies. I mean, how many of you guys are believing for something in your life, hallelujah. in your house? You, how many be able to want to be able to be like her? You know what? That's completely gone. I yes. can't explain it. Do you know it? Yes. I mean, right now, we have the faith right now. Enough of us are here. Lord. To believe, to pull down God's sovereignty, to rest in this place, to be yes. to, to have people healed in this house in yeah, yeah, sure. mm -hmm. this morning. And then uh, I'm just going to confirm what I've been reading to you in Luke 1, verse 38. It talks about Mary making this decision to give the voice a situation. So let's go to Luke 38. Luke, oh, I'm sorry, Luke 1. Oh. I was like, man, there ain't no 38 in here. <laughs> and this was talking about where Mary was ha dealing with the, uh, I think it was the, uh, when the angel came to speak to her, talking about, hey, you're going to be, you're going to hold the Christ, you know, you're going to hold the Savior, and she was like, I don't even have a man yet. You know what's going to happen to me? If I'm pregnant and I'm not married and I have and I, and and I don't even, I'm not even married. I'm going to get I'm going to get rocked. What are you talking about? He will be great and I will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. So these are the words that are dangerous speaking to Mary I believe. And I'll just cut to the chase. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. So he's talking about what she's about to carry. She's the, the angel speaking destiny into her womb. And as he's speaking it, he's giving, he's he's pumping her up to let her know, hey, you know, this is who you're going to carry. You know, you better. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I don't, I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you therefore also that that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of god now indeed elizabeth oh man this is going to get good right here now indeed elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in her old age and this so elizabeth is a relative to mary how many of you guys know john the baptist she's a cousin right she's a cousin so you go to your cousins like, man, I'm going to have uh, the Savior of the world in me, and I'm old, and um, I can't bear any children, and I'm six months pregnant. And we're like, what's going on, you know? I did not figure that one out. So now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age. And this, also, and this is also now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. So here's my punchline. So Mary, just imagine if you women are going through that and God was dealing with you in that. Mary said, you know what Mary said? Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In other words, the angel was trying to get to her to say, Hey, this is what's going to happen. You know, he didn't say, you have to do it. You don't have to do it. What she said, let this be, I'm your maidservant. Let, let, what did the word say? Let it be done according to your word. She spoke that word. It's all right, let's do it. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't compromise. She didn't say anything else. So, let's go to Genesis. We're closing with this. <clears throat> Man, I messed up again. All right. Okay, you guys go to Genesis. I'm going to Luke real quick. Luke 1. Luke 1, verse 57. Okay, so we're talking about Mary doing her thing, right? She's about to have... 
she's realizing that she's going to conceive the Savior of the world, right? Uh-huh. She believed, she believed right? <laughs> so a little further in Luke 56, it says, Now Elizabeth full-time came birth. Uh, this is talking about the birth of John the Baptist. Now Elizabeth full-time full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So in other words, if you're going to a city and a lot of people know you and they know you, you're old and you cannot have children, children, and all of a sudden you're pregnant, everybody's like, holy smokes, dude, she's that lady, she's, she has a baby, she's going to have a baby, she has a baby, you know what I mean? She, she said no, that they couldn't have a chance, you know, maybe she got her tooth tied, I don't know. But she's having a baby, right? And so it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child. So they all came grouped up, you know, maybe like to a little feast or whatever. Had some tamales or something like that. <laughs> and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. You know how many people like little Georgie, little David, you know, normally we expect our oldest or our firstborn to be named after us, right? But there was a purpose. So in the circumcision and child, and they would have him called by the name of his father, Zacharias. So Zacharias was the father of John the Baptist, correct? Okay. His mother answered and said, so the people were saying, oh, what are you guys going to name him? Blah, blah, blah. You should name him this or you should name him that by his uncle Pete or Julio or whatever, right? He says, no. Or name him Zacharias after his name, after his father's name. He said, no. His mother answered and said, no, he shall be called John. Yeah, yeah. Let me go a little further here real quick. But they said to her, there is no one among your relatives... Oh, but they said to her, so they're saying, hey, you know what? There's no one among your relatives who's even called John. You know, it's not even called that name. What are you doing? You get this name, John. <laughs> so they made signs to his father. So then Zacharias is probably over here kicking it with the compadres or, you know what I mean? The friend, right? And he's saying, because Zacharias can't talk. He's mute. Yeah, yeah. He didn't believe. And so they, they said the name. Well, right now, you know, what's his name going to be, Right. Um, so they made signs to his father. So they, I don't know, they said, made signs to his father. What he would have him call. And he asked for a writing tablet. So he grabs a writing tablet. <laughs> grabs a writing tablet and says, okay. You know. And wrote, saying, his name is John. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So they made signs to the father, and he asked him for a writing tablet. He wrote, saying his name. So they all marveled. Check this out. Immediately, immediately. We tell our kids, hurry up now. Immediately, his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God, because he was obedient to the very thing that the Spirit put in him. They couldn't talk in language, but they were agreement in the Spirit. And they were obedient to God. And therefore in return, when he confessed the word in his heart, because he didn't have a voice to speak, his, word, his, 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 his heart and inside his soul spoke more and louder than any of our voices here today. Yeah. And when they were agreement, God immediately, sovereignly went like, that's my boy. Bam, loosened his tongue and he was able to, able to talk. And he didn't say any words. The first thing, what did he do? He praised God. Yes. What is the first thing the centurion did? He didn't say, oh man, look at that. You know, Jesus just died. You know, what did he say? He, he immediately yes. worshipped God. He yes. praised God. He glorified God. Yes. A lot of times we get involved with our own emotions. And instead of worshipping God, praying God to our situation, like, oh man. And I catch myself doing that all the time. Oh man, I'm too busy. This, that, and the other. I'm, the first one I preached this to was myself. There's a lot of areas that I need to fix myself, that I need to work on myself, but I'm a work in progress. You know what I mean? There's hope yes. for us, man. Yes. 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 Oh, <laughs> So, what scripture was that in Genesis? In Genesis uh, um, 1. The, uh, uh, wait, hold up. I was still on Luke. Hold on. Oh yeah, I'm on Luke right now. Yeah, Luke. Luke 1, 57, 66. Luke 1, 
5766. I confused you guys because I sent you Genesis ahead of time. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. That's cool. I was hearing hell, it was his name. It sucked. Yeah, yeah, make sure you're paying attention. Keep me on my toes. Now we need to build our faith. Do you guys understand the steps that we're taking in order to realize that we need to build our faith? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, we're going to go quickly. I got five minutes. That's it. Genesis 1. I'm going to go really fast now. Genesis. Then God said in Genesis... Three. One, three. One, three. One, three, six, and seven. I'm just reading the first, the first uh, 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 words of the uh, first uh, words of the sentence. In three, it says, "Then God said, we all know what happened. Let there be light, right? right? Let's go to six. Then God said, let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters. That's not my point. My point is, let God said, God said. Yeah. But, but, but. Let's go to seven. Thus God made the firmament, and which were under firmament, from water which were above the firmament, and it was so. So in other words, what does it mean, and it was so? Go to your room, and that's it. It's a done deal. God said, what do we do with our kids? Go to your room and stay there. God said, and it was done. And our kids, sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. But it was so. Right? <laughs> Look at verse 8. And God called. Do you call somebody and not talk to them, or do you call to say something to them? You call. Sorry, you put voice to that, right? Mm -hmm. 11, let's go to 11. Then God said, let's go to 14. Then God said, let's go to 24. <laughs> then God said, let's go to 25. And God made the beast, to so hold on, and God saw that it was good. Let's go to 26. Then God said again. Let's go to 28. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Should I keep going? Should I keep going in the Old Testament? You guys don't believe me? Let's go to the New Testament. Go to the New Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. That was Old Testament. You say, well, that's in the Old Testament. Well, let's go to the New Testament. Go to Matthew 28. I swear, man, I'm almost done. We'll go have cookies and cream after. <laughs> you don't have to hurry. All right. 28, 16, 20. <laughs> then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been, been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. He spoke that word. Hallelujah. Look what's happening today. How many churches across the nation because one man spoke one word? They're still happening. Yeah. We give voice to stuff. My whole point is that we give voice to something. We give voice to a matter. We give voice to a circumstance. He gave voice and it happened, man. Right? Okay, so that's New, Tem New Testament stuff. Uh, let's go to 1 John 5.14. Okay, 1 John 5.14. It says, I'll read it. I know somebody's still flipping through, but I'll read it for Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Do you guys hear that? Mm -hmm. 
It says, now this is, you guys need to hear this because there's some of the people who are believing God for something. This is important because you guys can stand on this very scripture. If you guys are believing God to do something great for you guys today, you guys need to stand on this scripture. The other stuff was knowledge, but now this is something that you can stand on because this is the word of God. So this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, so when we ask, we have to put voice to it, right? Yes. We know that we have the petitions that we have asked Him for. Amen? Amen. Okay, Matthew 8. Don't, don't, don't turn your Bible anymore. I'll just go to it. Matthew 8, 16, 17. Okay. When evening had come, they brought to Him many who were demon-possessed. And He cast out the spirits with the word. How did he cast out the spirits? The word. The word. And healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Yes. So by a word, you can cast out something in your, in your, in your immediate life that you're going through. Just by a word. What does prophecy mean? Can I, can I, can I close with this? What does prophecy mean? Declaring the mind of Christ. Declaring. Prophecy means to speak it out. In the Greek, it says to make a declaration of events to come. Go ahead, Dave. How many of you guys are believing God or are doubting God or don't know what to believe for with God in a situation that's out of your control? Hey, you can't hear anything. <laughs> Don't be shy. Right now is the time to ask. We've done everything that we could possibly do on this earth. We've taken communion to get our hearts right. We've asked for forgiveness. We know who He is. We've learned the Word to understand the Scriptures behind what we're trying to do. We've learned about declaring the Word. We've learned about asking. We've learned about wisdom. To seek God's wisdom for what He has for us. Now it's time to speak that voice. Yes. Give that problem that voice. Give that mountain that voice. What is it? Is it business? Is it personal? <clears throat> is it your marriage? Is it your finances? Is it you don't know what to do the next step? <clears throat> you're tired of this, you're tired of that. You're, you're, at a, you're at a crossroad right now. What would be you believing God for? I don't care who's sitting next to you. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. You need to examine yourselves right now and ask God whatever you're fighting for. I tell you this right now. Yesterday, I prayed for every single person that's here today. I asked God, I said, God, don't allow anybody who's going to come to bring doubt to this house today. Amen. Don't allow anybody to walk through this door if they're not supposed to hear this word tonight. I said, please, God. I said, there's people in this house that really need to hear the word of God and they need a fresh touch from heaven from you. I said, I can't do it. You have to do it. Yes. But I'll be obedient and do exactly what you want me to do. Yes. The way this service turned out is exactly how he told me to do it. There is nothing that I did out of order that he didn't ask me to do in my spirit. The best that I can hear him. The best that I can hear him say. Um, he didn't tell me to go left or go right. But he said, the best that I could hear the way he wanted me to do the order, I did it. And I did it because I was obedient because he has something for you guys. Now, I've done everything that I could possibly do as a man, spiritually, to try to get you to draw you out and to believe God what you're asking for. What He's asking from you guys today is to confess, to ask Him for what you're believing for. You guys have to tell Him that mountain to move. You're amongst believers right now. Who, there's not a whole lot of believers out there. You're amongst believers. Those women who have been stirred up because of the testimonies, because of the healings that He's done for you guys and the things that you guys have said out of your own mouth, you guys need to stand and agree with them who are hurting, who are going to come up here hurting, who are come up here who, are, who don't even have enough faith to even do that. You need to encourage them today. And that's why God said you guys are being raised up today. That's a confirming word by the Holy Spirit. Prophecy means to speak it out, to make declaration of events to come. I don't know what it is or what it is or, or, or what the circumstance is. What does command mean to you? <clears throat> Do it right now. What does command mean to you? I do it right now. 
I wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to you if you were telling me like that. <laughs> what does command mean? To, to authority, right? Yes. With authority. Hey, you know what? You're fired. You know what that means, right? That's a command. You're gone, man. Later. Right? It means to direct. That's what prophesy means. This is what prophesy means: to direct, to charge, to claim, to challenge. To dominate as position, to direct to come. Yeah. What are you directing to come forth? Is it life? Yeah. It is a certain matter in your in your life that you are beyond control. To govern, to sway. What does sway mean? Change your change. Yeah, right? Either or. It says the word says in the Greek it says to sway, <laughs> to influence, to give an order. How many of us need God to sway? on our behalf today. Oh, yes. How many of us need Him to sway and give us influence in our jobs and yes. in whatever we have dealings in our, in our own personal lives? Yes. How many of us need something or so? Oh, yeah, I said that. <laughs> How many of you are going through hell and can't find your way out? How many are believing God to do something in your life but haven't even moved your lips to confess and make it known? How many of us are believing God and haven't even said anything to Him? We're waiting for somebody else to do it for us. How many of you to make choices that will change the very outcome of your very life today? How many of you are in need of a touch of the one who heals? How many are, are in need of a touch of the one who comforts? The one who brings peace in the middle of the trials? The one who will spark something in you to want to live a cleaner life? The one who gives wisdom if you ask for it? The one who won't give up on you even if you mess up? The one that's closer to you than a brother? The one that redeems the brokenhearted? The one who counsels the afflicted. You guys need Jesus today. And I don't mean to sound cliche, but honestly, He's here today. I knew that He was going to show up today, yesterday night. It was 12.03, and I knew He was going to be in this house today. I don't know how it didn't matter. And when something doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. What this guy's doing, that guy's, it doesn't matter. You know that He's here. And I'm confidently telling you right now, whatever you're asking without doubting, yeah. Right now, this second, in the name of Jesus, without doubting, we'll agree with you. Yes. He will do whatever you ask. Right. I guarantee it. I know it for sure. I know the Holy Spirit. And, and as best as I know Him, as best as I feel Him inside of me, I know right now if you ask and you declare with your mouth, not me doing it for you, not me laying hands on you, but you coming to the altar and confessing with what you're asking for, He will do it. He's faithful. And I've showed you. Time and time again, that what the Word says, that He will be faithful to do it to you. I've yeah. proved it to you. I don't know how much more I can say. But I'm challenging you guys today. Ask anything. Whatever the desires that you've had since you were a little kid. Whatever <laughs> desires that someone has ripped away from you. Whatever things that are going, you're going through that have caused you not to believe in yourself. I'm challenging you guys today. And I'm going to do it with you guys. Because I'm the same. I'm no different. I'm in the same boat as all y'all are. We're all in this together. I've just been chosen to talk. But you know what? I challenge you guys today. Ask. Babe, you want to play? And I ask the ministers in this house, if you are called to ministry, you guys need to step forward. If you guys are called to help people, you need to step forward so we can lay hands on you so you can get on the road to get, do what you got to do. Who are waiting to get yourself right? It ain't going to happen. Whatever you guys ask, I guarantee you he will do it.